Okay, this next portion is really critical, and this is using your case loop. There's a lot of rumors out there that you can use wire pulling lubricant or baby oil. Unless it's specifically designed for use in reloading, don't use it. Use Imperial Sizing Wax or RCBS Case Lube. Um, Lee makes some stuff. I don't like to spray lubes. I've had problems with it. I always use this stuff here. In fact, I like to use this little lubricating pad, but I'm going to show you how to do it um, both by hand and using the pad. There is such thing as using too much, but it's better to use too much than not enough, because if you don't use enough, the case will get stuck, and you can either A, tear the head completely off the case, and then you have the case body stuck in there, or you can tear the rim off. If you end up doing that, you have a real problem. You only need a little bit uh, to get you where you need to be. Take a drop and have the drop, I don't know, about six millimeters wide. And rub between your fingers. Your fingers should feel tacky. You shouldn't, you don't want to over, over lubricate. It. The part where you want to lube is from the shoulder down to about here midway down the case. You can lube it all the way down if you like. And I just roll it between my fingers and give it a, like a tacky feeling. Insert the case into the press. Alright, when it gets to here you'll f feel it stop. That's where the die is starting to reform the case to its original size. If it takes too much pressure to push it up probably don't have enough lubricant. You'll see the primer pop out. And down it comes. Very nicely done. And you'll see a bright mark from the shoulder down to where the head is. And some people say it's a sign of incipient, incipient head separation, but not always. It's just sometimes you'll get more than other times. I'll show you a way of checking um, to see if your head is about to separate on your case. Again, a little bit will go a long way. You should feel a tacky feeling on her. Once your fingers have lube on it, all you're doing is augmenting what you already have. Put the case make sure it's squarely in the shell hold in the shell holder, run it up until it stops, boom, you're done. Now these cases turn out pretty good, considering they're picked up at the range. Um, the person I got these from, I always ask for I pick up brass from somebody else because they may be a reloader too. He was shooting them out of an M1A, and the M1A is notoriously harsh on brass. So th these things stretch quite a bit. What I'm about to do is show you what happens when you use too much lube. Put a little too much on there. Most, what you'll get is a phenomenon called oil dents. And all it is is a law of viscosity um, inside of your press. I'm going to put a nice fat drop on the shoulder here. The shoulder is usually where you get your oil dents. Sometimes just below it. And the oil dents are fairly harmless. All it does is it kind of gives it um, a slight dent, maybe like a little wrinkled look. Those will fire form out under firing. Let's see if I can make one here. Felt something. Yep, and then we have an oil dent. I'll take a close up of it. I don't know if you can see it from here. I have a little oil dent. Thicker cases aren't as susceptible to it as thinner ones. Okay, I'm going to show you the proper use of the lube, the lube pad here. Um, if you don't have one of these, or if your local gun shop doesn't carry one, go to like an Office Max or an um, Office Depot and get an uninked 
ink pad is the same thing. The only thing is this is just a little bigger. What you want to do, this one's already been loose, so I'm just going to add two I already got. Uh, you're going to want to start out with about a, a dime size uh, blob of lube, and you want to rub it in just like so. All across the pad, make it nice and even. Because you just don't use the center of the pad, you're going to use the whole thing. And when it gets dirty, just take it out and wash it off. And if you don't want to wash it, just flip it over. Okay, how to use the pad. Take a case, needs to be sized, put it on the pad, just roll it. Like that. And you'll feel it, it'll have a tacky feeling. You can pop it in the press and off you go. Or, if you're in a mass production, roll as many as you can on the pad at once. Usually five is about the most I can get on here and have an efficient amount of space to work with. But the pad is a nice time saver. Okay, once you're done sizing, the next step is tr cleaning. All you're gonna wanna, all you're gonna wanna do is just take your brass and wipe it off. Because you have several more steps to do yet before you tumble them, and you you don't necessarily have to tumble your brass. You can, but you don't have to. I do just because I have the equipment to do it. If you don't, just wipe it off with a clean cloth. Okay, next step in the preparation of rifle brass is the trimming process. And the tools required to accomplish this is your trimmer. I'm using the Lee trimmer with a 308 mandrel on it and the number two shell holder that goes with it. The first thing you want to establish is I want to see how much these cases have stretched. I'm going to measure one. Ooh, wow. Yeah, these are really stretched. It's supposed to measure two inches even. I trim mine to 1.995. And but this is measuring two point zero two zero, which is a little bit too long. That's well over allowable length. So you know you're going to take off a lot of material. The thing about rifle brass is it will stretch quite a bit. You want to make sure you keep that under control. It will stretch far more from a semi-automatic like these uh, were fired from an M1A. When I fire these at my bolt action, I want to stretch nearly as much. So you, want to, you want to cut them down to size I'm doing this by hand just for instructional purposes. Normally I would put this in my drill. You want to make sure Nice thing to place to put your um, trimmer is inside the press. Now this has a big burr on it. I'm going to take some close-ups with this because um, the next step after trimming is chamfering and deburring. Okay, I'm going to show you how to measure the cases. Now. We've already trimmed them to size and we deburred and chamfered them. Now we measure them. The reason why we want to measure them after you deburr them is because the little burr that forms on the inside of the case mouth when you pull the tool off, when this tool is popped off, it can take that burr and make it higher than the actual case mouth and give you a false reading. And then you'll think your cases are still too long. Now is the time to measure them. Absolutely perfect.